I'm Rich Lund, and this is another Raising Monarchs video. Thanks for checking it out. It's December here in Michigan, and so that means easily my monarch season is over. So what monarch video would I be releasing in December here with my season already being done? Well, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update as to how this season went for me, and then also, I'm kind of excited to admit this, I was wrong about something, and I wanted to make sure to get that correction video out. Let me begin with an apology for you. At the beginning of the summer season, I had said that there was many videos that were going to be coming out. The problem was, nature didn't quite cooperate with that. You may have known from previous videos or just from following the news that in March, around March 8th and 9th, there was a major storm that happened in Mexico around the time that the monarchs were migrating up north. It's tough to estimate just how much this impacted the population. But estimates are now coming in, now that we've had more time to study, that about 7 to 8% of the monarch population was taken out by this severe wintry event. I had other people comment and mention to me that they were in Michigan and that they were finding monarchs as usual. For me, it seemed like it was going to be a lot larger a number than just 7%. To put it in perspective for you, last year I released over 300 adult monarch butterflies. This year, I found 30. 30. Normally, to start out the season, I go out for my jogs in the summer anyway, and it's around late June that I start to find eggs. So I've got some trails that I jog on, and there's a lot of milkweed along them, so I'll do some spot checking as I go for my jog. Around the first week of July, that's really when the eggs are out there, and I can find a lot of them pretty easily. So traditionally what I've done is, after July 4th, on July 5th, mom's birthday, I'll go out for an all-day egg hunt and I'll usually find a good batch. Sometimes I've come back with 20 or 30 if I spend the whole day doing it. This year, I didn't find a single egg until July 25th. So I had promised that we'd have plenty of videos because I had a lot of ideas and plans to make them, but it's tough to release a lot of videos when you don't have the, the actors, the stars of the show. With only 30, there wasn't a whole lot I could get done. And since this was about 10% of what I was seeing, I was worried that before I heard about that 7% number, I thought it was going to be a lot larger than that. It'd be interesting if you could leave in the comments below just if you've been doing this for a few seasons, what kind of numbers did you see compared to previous years? Around January or February, that's when the numbers get released. I usually check monarchwatch.org to see what are the numbers that they are counting in Mexico. I'm not predicting they're going to be very large. The last couple of years, since 2014, we've been able to see some regrowth in the population. It didn't mean that we were out of the woods. There can be natural events, like this weather event that happened in March, that can cause the population to take a hit. But apparently also, that storm caused another problem. A lot of the trees in the forest that the monarchs need to roost in, up near the top, they roost in them over the winter because in large clusters and numbers, they can protect each other from high winds and cold temperatures. A lot of those trees were taken out by this storm, too. Not to mention, there's been some illegal logging that has been happening in that area. And as far as I know, the Mexican government is trying to do something about that, too. The Monarch's just taking hits from all directions. So I hope you understand, I had plans for a lot more videos, and I'm hoping next year I can get more of that done. For now, though, I really wanted to show you this video I put together because it gives me the chance to admit where I was wrong. Back in July, I released a video on how to repair a chrysalis. In case your chrysalis has come undone at the silk and it was not able to hang, as far as I knew at the time, that meant that the monarch wasn't going to survive. It was never going to be able to fly. In fact, here's what I said back then. If the chrysalis isn't hanging, that butterfly is not going to make it. Wrong! I have since been corrected. Mona Miller, who I really trust for great information, she helped me out with this one, and she informed me that actually, no, the chrysalis does not need to hang for that monarch to emerge and be able to fill their wings the appropriate way. They can survive. Now, still, if you want to hang the chrysalis the way that I show in that video, it's still another viable option. But I've got another setup I can show you as far as if you've got a chrysalis that's no longer hanging, how can you get that adult to emerge and still be able to hang correctly and pump fluid into the wings? It turns out they don't need to pump that fluid immediately. They have some time to decide when they start to do it, and they'll wait until they're in a comfortable hanging spot to do so. So if you want to do this, without further ado, here's the setup that I did back in August. It all begins with a bucket, and then I'm going to put my butterfly net on the inside of it. 
Now, I know not everybody has easy access to a butterfly net, and they are kind of expensive, so something like pantyhose could easily work too. I just didn't happen to have any pantyhose lying around at the time. The goal is to get the interior of the bucket to be some sort of material that she can easily climb up. Now this chrysalis here, since it's turned black, I know is about to eclose. That's the proper term for when an insect comes out of the pupal state. So whenever I've said emerging, what the real term is, is eclosing. And I can see from this separation, this is going to eclose within about an hour. So I selected this one. Now once I have it, I'm going to gently remove it, and I'm going to place it into my bucket. Now this container, in retrospect, I didn't actually need, but it still served as a good place to put the chrysalis. And I've got some paper towel in there too, just to give her more traction. Place this inside of the bucket, and make sure then that the paper towel connects to where she's going to be climbing up no matter which direction she chooses. This nice netting will be an easy climb for her. And now, gently lower in your chrysalis, and it doesn't matter which way you lay it. She'll be able to emerge no matter which orientation you have that chrysalis. And now it's just a waiting game. Emergence has commenced. Right around the same time my neighbor decided to start mowing the lawn. So be it. Push. Push. Once she finds a comfortable place, she'll start to pump that fluid into her wings. Looks like she's almost there. You can see the flexing of the abdomen as it's pumping that fluid into the wings. So awesome. At the same time, she's patting together her proboscis, fusing that two part instrument into one. She's got a lot to do. Sorry that we gave you the added challenge of finding a place to hang from, but it was for educational purposes. Hope you don't mind. You're tough, we knew you could take it. And I hope it's apparent too that this is a really quick process. If you're emerging these at home, you might miss it. Because one minute, it's a chrysalis. Next minute, it's already out. Quite often, you miss this part too. I've never seen this before. I've never seen them do a little wiggle dance. 
while pumping up their wings. Maybe we just have a more joyful, excited monarch? Maybe she's happy to be on camera. I don't know if you've gotten to the point that I'm at, but I can tell it's a her from the underside of the wings too, as soon as they come out. If this was a male, where the black dot would be on their lower wings, we'd be able to see like a dimple in their wings right where that would be. I can tell it's a female because that dimple is absent and because of the thickness of the black stripes on her lower wings, which we're seeing the underside of. And she's still hanging out there, but as you can see, the wings are almost fully, if not already fully, pumped full of that fluid. At this point, it's not so much about pumping them full of the fluid, that's done. But now they just have to hang and dry. So I hope it's pretty clear, I was wrong. And I don't mind being wrong. You know, the more that we do this together as an online community, the more we learn from each other. So actually, I really appreciate being told that I was mistaken. I get the chance to learn more as I go. I've learned a lot from you guys. Ooh, ambulance. Don't worry, girl, it's not for you. Now, as I tell my students often in my classes, it's okay to be wrong in science. It's just when you are wrong, you gotta admit it and you gotta see what other answers are out there. Being wrong is, in a way, kind of pleasurable in science because it means you learned more. So even though I was incorrect, I actually got something out of this. Now I actually know two different ways that I can take care of a chrysalis that no longer is able to hang. Who isn't a fan of options, right? Now I do have another Raising Monarchs video for you. I've filmed it already and I'm taking my time with the editing, making sure that it, it turns out correctly. Because the next one that's going to come out, it's probably going to be the most important one that I've released. And it's probably also going to be the one that maybe some people aren't going to like. It's tough sometimes to hear the news, but we need to talk about OE bacteria. When it comes to the monarchs and what kind of infections they can have, we need to up our level of responsibility here. If we want to help out the monarchs, we need to really be educated on some of these parasites. So the next video that I have planned is going to really teach you what OE bacteria is and also teach you how to test for it. So please watch for that. It's going to be really important. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Check out some of the other Raising Monarch videos, including the core five series, part one through five. They really show you how to do this. Get ready for the spring season that's coming up. And please tell us about how things went for you this season down in the comments below. Let's start that discussion. And if you give this video a thumbs up like, that actually does help get this suggested to more YouTube viewers out there. Helps get more exposure to this Raising Monarchs effort that we are trying to do. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching and thank you very much for caring about the monarchs and trying to help them out. Who's the monster? Who's the real monster? Is it the creature or is it the doctor? Who's the monster? Who's the real monster? The use of violence or misuse of science? So this is my thanks after doing you a favor. I've seen better behavior from nose picking for creators. You like to call yourself the Adam of my labors. You're just a beta test. Next version will be much greater. Resurrected from the dead, but a criminal just the same. No responsibility for your actions. You just pass along the blame. What I've done is a true art, causing revolutionary waves.